Now, if something a little heavier is more to your taste, then stick around. We're about to have a very serious history lesson in Irish rock, courtesy of my BBC Radio Ulster friend and colleague, Mr Paul McLean. The year is 1989. I'm about 10 miles up the road at school. Margaret Thatcher is still in power. The Mitchell brothers haven't even been seen in Albert Square. But here in East Antrim, something rather remarkable is stirring. Here we are in Larne with one third of therapy, Michael McKeegan. How did the three of you actually come together and form therapy? I was at school with Fife at the time. And he was saying, I met this guy writing some songs and he played me a tape and it, it was brilliant. They, they'd already done a, a demo cassette, just Andy and Fife. And I was going, man, this is brilliant. <laughs> I was really into it. And then I, I was dead chuffed when they asked me to join. And we just, we just all kind of hit it off. So here we are at the Art College on York Street in Belfast. This would have been the scene of our first ever live show. We played right. here uh, with an English band called Deckman's Within, and that was organised by the Warzone Collective, yes. based out of uh, Gyros, just around the corner. And they were pretty much the only people at that time to put on bands that were a wee bit different, you know, apart from the usual cover bands and U2 sound alike. So obviously it's very different now, but you know, it would have been up just up in there somewhere. We played quite a few shows up in there for them. When did you first decide, right, we're going to do an album and really try and go for this? After we did the single, then we did, the next logical thing was to record more songs. You know, we, we always kind of took things as they came and we thought, right, what's, what do we feel like doing? And that was when we did the uh, Baby Teeth album and that got released with Ouija Records mm -hmm. in England. So that was a big deal for us because we were fans of the label. And uh, bizarrely, it went to number one in the indie charts, which we were just like, what? we sort of came to the attention of A&M Records, who were a major label, and that was when, you know, everything sort of stepped up a gear and we had sort of proper budgets to do things and, and make the records we really wanted to make. We didn't really spend a lot of time sitting about drinking champagne, you know, basking in the glory of, you know, what we just achieved or anything like that. It was more of a case of, right, that was a good tour. Go do another tour, gonna make it better. Another record, gonna make that better, change things. And it was always a bit, there was always a forward motion which we found quite exciting. So there wasn't necessarily that much time for reflection, which was good because it, I suppose if we'd overthought it, we probably would have possibly been bigger in a shorter period of time, but then I, I don't think we'd be about today. We're now at the Oh Yeah Center on Gordon Street in Belfast as part of the Northern Ireland Hall of Fame mm -hmm. here. Some of these gigs must have been incredible. What was the biggest events that you played at? I suppose some of the, the, the big festivals we would have done around about 1995. We did uh, Donington, or Monsters of Rock as it was called then, and we did some big, big festivals down in South America, which was, you know, playing huge football stadiums. 80,000 people, kind of just, just crazy stuff, you know. Probably the, the worst time was just before we did Suicide Pact, because uh, the label we'd signed to after a &M, we did a couple of records with them, and then they kind of fell to pieces, and it was one of those, you know, January, starting to write a new album, no record deal, no gigs booked. I think it would have been easy just to say, you know what, that's the end of it. You know, because, you know, I always say if the band end it today, I can't say a bad thing about it, because it's been brilliant, you know, it's been brilliant for me, brilliant for everyone in the band, and. If it had ended then, or it ends whenever, you know, it's, there's absolutely no regrets. 20 years on and therapy will be rocking the Mandela Hall this Friday night. Now, if you would like something a little bit more sedate, you could check out the 